We are in the face room now, and we have the Sydney G2 character loaded to begin working with. Before we get into adding a custom photographic face here, I do want to mention that if you're trying to have a similarity to somebody, you may want to go through your library of poser characters and see which one already has facial features very similar to or most similar to the person that you want to imitate. The reason for that is, is that while we can go ahead and use some of these dials here and shaping tools, they do not work as robustly as actually going in and doing direct hands-on morphs. So if you think you can just turn the dials and create something that looks like Arnold Schwarzenegger, not quite the tool set to do that. You'll have to create custom morphs for that. The area we haven't looked at is our photo area right here. And I've created a photo texture and I want to talk about getting that set up. The biggest part of working with textures is actually the workflow that you go through so that you don't get frustrated by the tool set. Some of the ways that this face room works is a little bit different than the rest of the Poser program. So I'll give you the easy way to go ahead and engage some of these features to get what you want faster. Loading in a texture is really easy to do. Just the file button next to it and we've got a front view and a side view. So we'll load the front view first. I'll click on that and if you have access to the working files, go to the chapter 10 folder. And before we load face front, I want to show you a little bit what's going on. I'm going to select this. There are plenty of free profiles available on the web for your character development. In fact, there's some for sale as well. So this is one that's available freely on the web. This is the profile view. And then if I go ahead and show you the front view, you'll see what I do to the textures to change it. And I need to point out something that is very, very common when you work with photos. Normally, you're not dealing with an ideal lighting situation. So you get things like cast shadows under faces and hard shadows under noses. This is a pretty good job. But the face is definitely lit more from the left than the right. There's already some predetermined shadows in here, and these show up in your textures. We'll talk about how to manage that a little bit later on. Something else to notice is that this person's head is actually tilted a little bit one direction, and their face, or their mouth area right here, is asymmetrical. The human face is very, very often asymmetrical, and there's ways to adjust that inside of the program itself. So now that you've seen the front and the side, let me show you what the textures actually look like that we'll be applying. Now, this isn't a course in Photoshop. However, I've included the actual Photoshop file in the working resources if you'd like to explore how I have that set up. Let me explain what's going on right here. I've taken the right profile of this photo and simply flopped it and turned it left. The program allows you to bring in a right or left profile, so it's not a big deal. I just did it this way to make it easy on ourselves. Something else to look at is that near the face area, I've taken the background and actually kind of blurred it in to similar like colors because the matches that take go on right near the edges of the actual photo or of the person's neck or back of the head. Sometimes the program moves the capture area around a little bit and so I don't want it changing colors to something like bright green. Also, you'll notice the eyes have been blunked out. It's kind of creepy if I go to the front view right here. The eyes have been erased a little bit and really I've left some what I'll call intentional mistakes in here so that we can see how they manifest inside of the Poser program and then how we go ahead and modify that. The nostrils have been removed because getting a nose texture to actually pin specifically on one of these stock geometry models, kind of tough to do. So since the geometry actually has nostrils modeled into it, you don't need to have them in the texture map because you'll be trying to get them to line up the whole time. And let me tell you, it's a losing battle. Something else I want to point out is that on the side view, for my ease in placing a character's face on here, I like to leave the ear on. But what happens is that just like with the nose, the ear for the character, as you can see over on the left, has been modeled. There is no way you are going to get this ear texture to match the ear model, especially when you get things like completely attached ear lobes like this, where the character has a semi-attached right here. We'll look at ways to erase that later on. So with that said, let me come back up to the top one right here. And I will simply double click on that to accept that. We get a Moodle dialog box that pops up. And this is where you tell Poser how to get things set up to make it easy. So we're going to click exactly where the arrow shows. And that is just to the edge of the eye right there. And then we receive additional requests to click on the edge of the mouth. 
So this will help rotate and set the texture in the program. So I'll click that. It drops in and we can see now that we're getting some success here with our face. To explain how the front and the side views play, everything that you look on the front portion of the face is driven by the front texture map. When it starts wrapping around to the side, the side map takes over. So when I bring in a side texture map, I'm not going to be super careful about where the nose and the lips go because that information on the model is actually driven by the front view and not the side view. As we work with these, close is good enough. It's very tough because as we start moving these lines around, we're actually going to be morphing the geometry a little bit, and that is sometimes quite undesirable. So before I start modifying anything, let's go ahead and bring in the side view. We'll do the same thing. Open, and this time I'll choose face left, double click on it. Again, we have a modal dialog box. It's asking for some anchor points that we can go ahead and tell the program where everything is. First, the top of the ear, and now, since that's been selected, we go ahead and click on the most prominent portion of the chin, and our character comes in. Program starts blending these two textures together automatically, which can save you a lot of time, but it also creates some issues that we see showing up right now in the character. For example, where it's doing the blending, the black background is actually showing through, or the hairline, depending on how much it's grabbing, and it's on the side of the face exactly where we don't want it. In our next movie, we'll go ahead and start tuning this up.